So we're gonna be calling Shannon Hunt. Downey, oh, this is your team. <laughs> please meet us at Cherry Queen. We miss you, Downey. Please. Please <laughs> call your own Downey. <laughs> My name is Shannon Hyde, and I'm ready to be your junior class president. Welcome back. Another episode of The Shannon Show. Very exciting one today. We have a former guest coming back on the show, live from New Zealand this time. It's Kenna Wells. Kenna, how are you doing? I'm doing good, thanks. That is absolutely awesome. I am so excited to do this again. The last one went pretty well. Uh, I mean, I just thought it was a good conversation, and then it did well on YouTube as well, which is yeah. even better. <laughs> uh, especially the clip I put up. I got, got some great reactions from that. Whatever. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But as I said, you're back in New Zealand. So tell me, how was the trip back? You're, you're back there, back home. What's it like? The trip over yeah. is so, um, considering that I live in Florida and I have to go to pretty much the completely other side of the world. So yeah. I, it was literally, I think, 24 hours straight of traveling. And I'm alone. It's not like I'm with siblings That's or parents. Worse. I know. And so I just have to sit there and just take it. And it's worse mm -hmm. with COVID because the airports are half shut down, yeah. which is what I didn't know coming over. So I prepared and I brought food this time. So yeah, I was, was going to say, I was just about to ask that. I was like, <laughs> did, you, did you prepare I better? wasn't the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, they're definitely more open. And so there was more people on my flights than I'm used to. But yeah. for the most part, long and exhausting. Yeah, I noticed that too. Um, like I just, I flew from like Pennsylvania to North Carolina like earlier this year. It was back in like, january i think and you know like all the airports are like social distance and stuff but once you get on the plane they just pack everyone in i'm like wait a second yeah guys. This, <laughs> like, where's the consistency here um i get people gotta make money though so what, yeah what do do? um what, what's a lot are you we were talking about before the show about you being in quarantine but you're back and the land down under is it does it feel good are you excited um i think it feels good i don't know i haven't left my hotel yet yeah so. <laughs> I don't really know. I am really excited. I haven't seen my parents since I actually moved to college. They didn't come with me. Yeah. So I haven't seen mid-August maybe. So that's the really exciting part is I haven't seen my parents face-to-face -face in a very long time. Yeah. Um, but I'm back and I'm excited to see my friends because we went into quarantine at your house um, for two weeks, the week that I was leaving. And so I never got to say goodbye to any of my friends or do any oh. of like my things so i'm really yeah. excited to be back other them know that i'm back so i'm gonna surprise them oh even really better <laughs> yep that's gonna be pretty cool wow um but you said you're talking about quarantine a little bit you can like leave at like 8 30 in the morning to like go for a walk or something are, are you sneaking out at all you're breaking out of the window busting out no Anything crazy have, new zealand takes this very seriously they oh. have the hotel that like manage everything so i went yes. down to the ground floor my first day because my parents delivered me some food and some things to do and i went to go pick it up and they told me i could pick it up and i was like okay and i get down there and the guard was like you don't have a blue wristband and i was like no i just came in yesterday so i i was told to come down and pick something up and they were like you can't be out like you're breaking rules we're gonna have to like isolate you people like we we're gonna have to clean the whole downstairs oh, wow. ground because I could be infected with COVID. Like, they take this right. so seriously. But, again, once I get out of quarantine, I'm not going to have to wear a mask. Like, New Zealand, they don't have any cases of COVID. They've completely yeah. destroyed it. Because they have this system and this flow. Wow. That, did, and you tested negative already, I'm assuming. Like, before yeah, they you actually got there? On day zero, on day yeah. four, I think it is, and day 12. So they test you three times mm -hmm. and it's like the gnarly test where like they get down, they get back there and they get some brain. And it oh, is gotcha. <laughs> are you, are you vaccinated too? I am vaccinated. So. Oh my, what are we doing? This is crazy. So you're, that must they, be so frustrating. Like I get it, but come on, yeah. like you're negative and you're vaccinated. Oh man, I, that sucks. Full 14 days. Yeah. Um, you said it's your last day, right? Yep. Today's my last day. I'll get out tomorrow at eight o'clock in the morning. I am a Maybe. free it should be it should be midnight you should be allowed to go that's <laughs> well you're you're actually allowed to leave the time that you landed and i landed at 5 30 in the morning i don't feel like leaving at 5 30 in the <laughs> you're morning you're not that excited to leave yeah no i actually this is really weird the nurses think i'm crazy i haven't left my room for anything the whole two weeks like i can go on those walks i can go on the terrace i just i like being alone so i just oh. sat here <laughs> I know the nurses think I'm crazy. They're like, "Have you gone on any walks yet?" I'm like, "No, 
I'm good. No, nope, just losing my mind by myself in this room. <laughs> what What do you do all day? Like, I'm not. I'm... Well, I do have Sebastian. I talk to right. him. I talk to my friends. I have a puzzle sitting on the floor that I haven't finished yet. <laughs> I need to finish this puzzle. I've done painting. I've done exercising. I watch movies. I like being alone. I don't know mm-hmm. why. Just I thrive in that kind of area. How many days do you think it would take? Like, for you to just absolutely go insane? Um, I don't know. Because really, the first three days were the hardest. Like, when you mm-hmm. don't have a routine and you don't have a schedule. But once you kind of make a routine, I feel like it gets easier. So, for me, I don't know. Because I also, when I lived back in New Zealand, we did quarantine for, I think, over two months straight. So, yeah. again, I never left my house for two months. So, I know I can do two months. Like, oh. I never went on. My <laughs> Isn't it different on- in a hotel room, though? Uh, I mean, a little bit, but at home, like, I didn't really leave my room. I kind of just went down the stairs, sure. eat, eat food when I needed to eat food, and then I go back upstairs to my room. Okay. I don't, yeah. I probably could last a long time. Like, if a so. zombie apocalypse broke out, I'd be the winner, because I could just sit in here and do nothing. But you wouldn't <laughs> even fight them? you just, like, sit there like, this is, this is light. I'm okay with this, guys. Yep. <laughs> That's fine. How's the food? The food? Okay, it's hit or miss. I've had a few days oh. where I've opened. I've opened the box of food and I've gone like, what is this? Like, what did I get? But they have, I'm actually in a five-star hotel because American diplomats differently. So we get like kind of upper class type treatment comparison to people. Cause you also have to pay for your own isolation. So most people probably go and pick a cheaper hotel. The government is paying for mine. So I'm very blessed in that area. Right. But the um it's good it's just obviously like you have a very small selection of food and i'm luckily for me i'm not a huge picky eater so i'll pick stuff yeah. but i know some people would probably lose their minds over some of the food that i've gotten like i think i had lentil spaghetti one day and i know some people mm-hmm. don't really like lentils, but i was okay with it <laughs> yeah so I, so people have to pay for their own isolation even if they're like, yeah. tested and they oh I, i'm not so that's that, that's a lot. Yeah, that's, that's the New, New Zealand, Zealand way of saying if you're leaving, just so you know, coming back is going to be hard. So you can either stay in the country or you can stay out of the country. I wonder it's if it's full way- price. The price? Yeah, like 14 days of hotel stays. That's no joke. Oh, yeah, they don't uh, they don't want you back. That no, they're exiling you. They're pretty much saying you're never coming back. We're gonna make yeah. this. The price of my hotel for the 14 days is over four thousand dollars. That's insane. Like, that's like half a semester of college on scholarships. Yeah, <laughs> like just put me in a tent. Like, honestly, like, I don't even want to deal with that. Oh, gosh. I guess, oh. Anyways, the, the food, uh, you said hit or miss. What, what is New Zealand food? I, I'm not sure we talked about this last time, but is it kind of well, like American food? Yeah. I mean, at the hotel, they kind of have, they, I've had Malaysian food, um, oh, Thai yeah, food, okay. Italian food, um, New nice Zealand assortment. Native food is more, it's Maori, Maori, which is their native um, kind of indigenous people. That's not really well known. Like, you don't just go into a restaurant and order it. You'd probably have to go yeah. and like out where it is. But New Zealand food is kind of, it's just more European because there's a mm-hmm. big influence. So I would say it's very English, like okay. English from Europe that kind of style of food very like kind of meat heavy yeah and sure i don't really know how to explain it <laughs> no you're good i don't i don't i, I don't know what british food is either so i, I couldn't tell yeah <laughs> may just i'm not gonna say anything i don't want to get hated on but uh so other than seeing your friends and family what are you looking forward to the most about like finally getting out of that stinking hotel room Um, traveling without having to worry about one. I mean, social distance is more of a practice here. Like, oh, you should probably distancing more because that's how you get sick. But you don't have that mandatory, like you have to wear a mask, you have to social distance, you have to, you don't, like no one's sick with COVID that they know of, or if they are, they know how to trace it back. So I'm looking forward to traveling and New Zealand has actually opened up to Australia and the Cook Islands. And so I'm actually going to Australia and the Cook Islands for summer. It sounds so weird saying summer because I'm in winter. Yeah. <laughs> for- oh, I was just about to ask about that too. Yes. This- yeah. <laughs> so for my this- summer break, I'm traveling. I'm really excited for that. 
that's fantastic that's just that's a lot of stuff going on at once for like one one summer and like you're just getting started yeah wow so what, what's the temperature like there right now and if you i guess you're in your room what am i asking <laughs> no well i i mean i lived here for two years yeah. so i can tell you fair, fair. <laughs> um, new zealand's very temperate they don't really get too hot or too okay. cold so right now it's like 60s and it's almost midwinter so that's not like too cold well where i am i'm in oh, it's kind of like oaky then so. yeah i'm like i'm the north island the south island however they get snowed on so they go into like the negatives during summer i mean winter goodness that's you're good so the changeover <laughs> yeah that i so whenever does everyone there refer to it as winter i get what yeah. are they talking about they're like oh, winter's coming oh wow and then like if you think about christmas christmas is their summer vacation so they're done yeah. with school it's christmas and it's summer that was the weirdest thing when i first moved here was hearing Christmas music and walking into the grocery store in like shorts and a tank top. And was like, but it's summer. Yeah, come on. It's so immature of them. Get it together. Like this is ridiculous. <laughs> come on. You should you should know better. Well, and half the Christmas music doesn't make sense when it's summer. Because it's like right. white Christmas. Um, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. It's cold outside. Those do I, not apply. <laughs> I guess the weather outside could still be frightful in a different way. I, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, would you say living in New Zealand is your biggest flex? Honestly, I mean, this is like probably the coolest. Okay, I saw this question and I was Come like, on. well, to other military kids, maybe because I'm the first military kid to live here, so like they completely had to figure how you, to like it. number one for sure. I am the first military. I didn't know kid. that. Oh, God, we're the that history. How did you not mention this last time? I don't know. I guess I just I don't know. You're being humble. But, yeah. My dad's position is the first one down here. Like, I'm not on a military base. I'm at an embassy. Yeah. But if we're talking about, like, just people who didn't grow up like us, I would say my biggest flex is just living in four different countries. Like, it doesn't I matter so. which. It mm -hmm. would just be lived in four different places. That's pretty, like, universal flex, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. No, no one can match that. That's but pretty cool. But if we're trying, like, military kid flex, then yes, I would say New Zealand because no one else has lived here. Yeah. That yeah. I know okay. of. Yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so I, I want to talk about our previous episode just a little bit and about some of, the, some of the comments we got. I don't want to get, like, I don't want to call anyone out or, like, necessarily, like, read off certain ones. Like, some people are much nicer than others. Don't get me wrong. Some people are giving us, like, facts, like, genuine information, just want to help us out or just, like, sharing things for other people, which I appreciate. And, like, you, some people yeah. compliment you, said you were such a good speaker. And I'm like, yeah, for sure. Like, you, Kenna needs a podcast from New Zealand. Uh. I, I'm not sure about that. Anyway. Uh, others not so nice others not so nice and you know what that's gonna happen there's some behaviors in the world but i wanted to show everyone that i know a thing or two about new zealand so i'm going to share some of the facts that i researched and then i'm going to make a clip of it because i think everyone should know just how i've like taken that as a learning experience what do you think yeah you did your yeah. research came back with the facts i came back <laughs> with more power than before yeah last time i wasn't prepared i didn't know what i was getting into but now that i realize how seriously they take this I'm going to take them on. I'm going to take them on. So here we go. And if, if I'm wrong, I don't even have to say it. Correct me. <laughs> uh, first of all, fun fact, New Zealand's engineers actually aren't smart enough to build the toilets correctly. That's why they're always spinning in the opposite direction, the water. I don't know why. I don't know why that's such an issue for them. I don't. It's the same with the seasons, too. They just can't seem to figure it out. I don't. Maybe we can, maybe we can help them out. Send some American ones down there and get things all fixed up, squared away for them. Oh, gosh. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty confused. Uh, next, I actually, this is the biggest one. New Zealand actually doesn't exist. I, I, I'm not sure if you knew this, Kenda. I'm not sure if you knew this. I don't know where you think you are right now. It doesn't exist. <laughs> First of all, it is way too close to Antarctica, so it should be freezing cold. It should be frozen out. It's way too close. It's way too close, if it hypothetically is there. And a lot of maps, I'll show a map right now. New Zealand isn't on all maps. That's because the real ones who know, like, they've been to space or something, New Zealand doesn't show up. I swear. Uh, next, the, 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 you know the kiwi bird that they have there? You know what I'm talking about? It's, like, yeah. only in New Zealand. It's, like, exclusive to the island. That doesn't make sense. It could just fly other places. Like, water uh, isn't stopping the, it. It can just fly to Australia. Ah, hey, it's my facts. <laughs> <laughs> also, nobody goes there. Nobody, nobody, nobody lives there. I don't know anyone who lives there. Do you know anyone who lives there? I don't know anyone no. who lives there. One. Um, 
it was actually i think it might have just been made up by the british empire entirely to kind of like hyperbolize how much land they had they're trying to scare people oh, yeah we got an island uh you know way down there where uh, nothing and um most importantly even if it did exist it really wouldn't matter because of how insignificant it is in comparison to australia so that's just you really that, <laughs> You're going to get so much backlash. <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to it. That was... <laughs> Man, seriously, that's what, it, that's what it felt like. You would have thought that that's what we were saying with some of that response. But, it's actually yeah. funny that you said New Zealand doesn't exist because I have a t-shirt that has New Zealand on the map. <laughs> we exist. <laughs> you know, just because I'm going to make a t-shirt with a map that doesn't have New Zealand on it. I'm going to have it say New Zealand doesn't exist. And uh, I'll, I'll get that one for you. <laughs> I'll send it over. <laughs> Hopefully, they don't well, put it into quarantine. They're going to put the box in a 14 day hotel room. Anyway. And also, just so you know, the kiwi bird. <gasps> Is that food? I can't tell if it's food or the nurses. Do you mind if I check the door real quick? Oh, please. This is like live okay. action. Here we go. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. I'm coming. Okay, so that was my <laughs> temperature check, and temperature I'm check. good. Yeah. How often does that happen? Daily. Daily. Only once a day, and then they come by. That yeah. It was pretty quick. That didn't seem too bad. Yeah, I told you they just point the little radar gun at your yeah. head, and they're like, "Hey, you don't have a fever," and then they ask, Sweet. "Do you have any?" have you been coughing sneezing and i was just nope i'm good wow and yeah they leave you in there that was was that your last one then or they do hit you one more time before you leave tomorrow uh no yeah that was my last one interesting how's that feel how's that feel it, let, it, let it sink good. in you're <laughs> top. Do you, has it been i don't know you said you're comfortable is it like dragging by a little bit or is it just like it is what it is um i think at the beginning it was very like holy crap you realize how long a day actually is when you're sitting around doing oh. nothing now it just kind of you're like whoa it was thursday a week ago and i'm already done like <laughs> the last the last week went by so fast for me the first week was very slow it just wasn't fun but i got into it so we're good so the puzzle like been... yeah you gotta get that puzzle <laughs> done that would be so demoralizing to have an unfinished puzzle like 14 days wasn't enough kind of yeah i know <laughs> i'm really I tell my parents, I hate this puzzle. It's a round puzzle, which I've never done before, but it's a thousand pieces. And I was like, no problem. Like, I'm really good at puzzles. I hate this puzzle. It's taking me it's down. It's round? It's round. Yeah. I don't, That's I rough. can show you. <laughs> this is what it looks like. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, that looks super annoying. I get a round puzzle piece. Yeah. And most of the puzzle pieces are just these green pieces that you just have to figure mm -hmm. out what it is and i'm just like this isn't fun i don't know who does this for fun are you old enough for this puzzle is it like what is this like 20 plus it says eight years to adult <laughs> this is a liar i'm 18 and i can't even do this puzzle by myself ridiculous maybe we need to wait a little bit longer we, need, we try it again try it <laughs> next time uh I, a big thing i want to talk to you about and we were gonna have sebastian on but it just it was too much of a special conflict we just kind of want to get it done sorry sebastian <laughs> i love you sebastian and i will get you on the podcast eventually seriously most definitely uh very one of my first friends in Oki, actually but i want to talk a little bit about something i haven't discussed on the podcast before and that's relationships for military kids and i, don't, I just haven't really talked about it i don't really have a reason like it's very it's very prevalent i think it I don't know. I, I I don't even hear other people talk about it. But it really is an issue whenever you live in a place and you may be interested in someone or dating someone and you're like, well, I'm leaving in six months or like I'm leaving in a year. It's so like, what am I doing? What's the point of that anyways? But Kenna has been successfully in this long distance, insane relationship across time zones and all sorts of stuff. And I think you have some expertise, I would say, in, in this field. I, I, give I think I've almost mastered it. Almost master. That's pretty impressive. If I, have, if I haven't yet, then I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. Well, I mean, you've like the conditions have just been stretched to the limits. So I, I would assume that you've mastered it, and maybe you can have some tips for some people. What do you think are the key components for maintaining one of these long distance relationships? Yes. Okay. So obviously, first one, communication. Like you right. hear that all 
but it's in a long distance relationship. It's definitely different from an in-person relationship. Yeah. What communication means. There has been times where Sebastian will text me something and the way I take it is completely different than the way he means it. And sure. you might, that's, that's communicating. He told you what he needed to tell you, but you need to make sure that that person understands completely what mm-hmm. you mean. Or else, like it can, it can go badly. I know, the one thing that I comes to mind for me is this is one we complete we argue about on the daily is <laughs> I will I will say be right back and for him be right back means like five to ten minutes you go and do what you need to do and then you come back but for me it's I will be right back from what I am doing no matter how long it is <laughs> that I'm doing that thing for but I'm gonna come straight back when I'm done. So I think I said be right back one time and then took like two hours. And he was like, that was not, what is your definition of BRB? And I, (laughs) well, I'm back. I can see both sides of it, I guess. Yeah. So now he knows when I say be right back, he's like, okay, Mm -hmm. do you mean a long time or a short time? And I will say, I'm literally doing this and I will come back in five minutes. And he's like, "Okay, okay, good to know. That's, that's communicating what you mean and making sure that that person understands And it goes both ways for both people. Like there's definitely times fashion says something and I completely do not understand it. And it has messed us up because I'm like, oh, you said you were coming back at like this time. And he was, no, I meant, I meant that was when I was leaving. And I'm like, oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) So communicate the big one. And I would also say that trust is also a big key component in Mm -hmm. a long distance relationship. Because if you can't go into the relationship trusting that person in their own environment, then it's not going to work out because yeah. you're not there. You can't go snooping around and making there's sure no that monitoring. You- yeah, there's no monitoring. So communication and trust would be the big two ones that stand out to me. Yeah. And a lot of the communication stuff, like you said, with the be, be right back, that's not, not something you would run into if you guys saw each other all the time. Because like yeah, that wouldn't no. even, that you would never even think that'd be an issue. Like, you'd be like, oh, be right back. You can sit here and I'll go do this thing and come yeah, back. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, you know that that person's waiting on you in person. Mm-hmm. Where on the phone, you're like, well, they can just go do and They can just go do something else. Like, yeah. I'm just on the phone. You can put the phone down. But you mm-hmm. don't fit in that certain way when you're like, oh, just be right back. <laughs> yeah. Do you think there is ever a point where it's like almost too much communication? But tell me if I'm wrong here. Because, um, yeah, you know, way more than I do. I with this but like is there like a point where you're like talking to each other too much like how often do you guys facetime is it every day is it like oh my gosh like do you get burned out obviously you guys really are close I th- yeah I this what must I'm be- do you know what i'm saying yeah this must be Maybe? so weird for you. you knew us before we were dating and then you yeah. knew us right <laughs> yeah, but now like- we're now we're like three and a half years into dating so I know it's been it's- so long and i just i don't know <laughs> like you guys like that so it's it's definitely new Yes, I would say we're we're pretty close. Um, <laughs> <if you> think- <laughs> um, obviously, obviously. Wait, what was the question? Wow, we really just uh, can you talk too much? Is there ever a point where you're like, uh, "Wow, I just am talking to this kid a lot"? And I just don't- um, well, I can def- I can break it down into each time zone we've been into. They're mm-hmm. all totally different. When yeah. I lived in New Zealand. Seb lived in Oki, it was only a three hour time difference. So our days were pretty much the same. So there was a lot more talking in comparison than when he moved to Germany and my nights were his morning and his morning were my night. We maybe had like two, three hours straight of talking and that was it for the whole day. So that was a very big difference. And now we're in the same time zone. And it kind of just depends on your demands of life. So like Sebastian, Mm -hmm. he's ROTC. And so when he says he has to go, I kind of have to just go, okay, when are you going to be back? And he goes, I Busy don't know. It could be and it's, uh, I just have to leave. And I'm like, okay. So too much communication? No, I would say because you don't know when your time's going to be cut short. Like there's, there's days, this actually happened the other day. It's been about three days now where Seb gets in bed. And the first time we FaceTime is his night at like 1130 in mm-hmm. my mid and he gets in bed and he goes I'm tired I'm going to sleep and I'm like okay I'm like just tell me how your day well my day was good I did this and I'm like oh okay you can go to sleep now and he says good night so if you compare that to a day where we talk all day 
I, ca- I feel like they kind of just subtract each other out in a long distance relationship. So no, you can't have too much communication because you don't know the days that you're going to go without zero mm-hmm. communication. Sure. Gotcha. I guess yeah. I can't imagine talking to someone that, that's just, that's three and a half years. Good job, guys. That's fantastic. <laughs> um, yeah. As, as is very obvious, this is not a romantic podcast at all. Do not come to me for love advice. I don't know what I'm talking about. This is uh, uh, definitely a new element. For military kids, is there a different approach, you think, to how to do it? Because obviously we're in much different situations. How would you, I don't know, almost like give advice to a military kid who's looking for a relationship? What, what do you think the yeah. way to go with it? I asked Seb this question because I was like, how would you answer this? So yeah. for who obviously no one really knows this but Sebastian's my first real boyfriend yeah and Sebastian dated one person in middle school I don't know if you want to count that as a real relationship absolutely not absolutely not we're we're not comparing ourselves to any other situation so right that makes sense isn't really you can take it how you want I'm not trying to advise because every every relationship is completely different like Mm -hmm. something one person may not work for the other person um, so I would say we both kind of came to the conclusion that you should approach dating as dating, no matter the situation. However, mm-hmm. you stand that in a military child relationship, like you both are military kids, that one of you is going to move at one point, whether it's within Probably a soon. year yeah. or it's within three years. Like, you don't know. The military could say, you know what? You all are moving out of this country in a week. Like, you guys are out. Like, the military mm-hmm. has a day over your life when you're a dependent of your parent so it would you need to go into the mindset that you guys are going to be long distance and you're going to have to figure that out now whether you decide that that's a good idea and you want to pursue that then that's cool but if you decide oh that's not a good idea then you're yeah. kind of leading yourself up for failure and saying okay well i'm going to date you up until you move you're just asking for heartbreak so gotcha and that mindset that you're going to be in long distance mm-hmm. at some point in life Keep your brains big. This is big stuff. Yeah. Do you think, I mean, when deciding whether to do long distance or not, other than staying together, what is there any upsides that you've come across or anything, anything oh. good from it? So this is actually weird, but I said this more in the past than I have mm-hmm. now. I actually prefer long distance. I used to say this more, what? but now it's kind of, it's kind of coming down to, no, I don't. But when we were at like our peak, we were doing really good. I prefer long distance. What? <laughs> <You> <laughs> I'm sorry, Sebastian. I'm sorry. Your ups and downs, man. But when we were doing really good, I prefer long distance because, especially in college, like you get to be your be your own person, but yet share that journey with the person that you love. So it's really cool yeah. because people say, "Oh, don't don't date in high school, don't date in college," because like you need to go out and be yourself and learn how to like grow up and be mm-hmm. that person want to be if you're long distance people don't understand this but you get to do that like I have my life is 100% separate from Sebastian's life and our dating life is like a good balance in between that yeah so I have to go out and go oh sorry guys like I'm gonna go spend the day with my boyfriend I don't get that choice I have to tell my boyfriend sorry I'm hanging out with my friends but I find that balance of well I'm gonna go FaceTime him instead Mm -hmm. of hanging out so I get to be my own, but at the same time, be in a relationship without having to worry about that person's relationship kind of taking over my life. So like I've grown so much in my own bubble and he's grown so much in his own bubble, but being long distance, you get to kind of do that together. And you're still connected. That's awesome. Yeah. So I would say- How inspiring. (laughs) Everyone out there is going to, I'm going to go- Everyone's like, sign me up. I need a long distance relationship. (laughs) <laughs> you get someone up as far away as possible yeah, i don't, I don't well, recommend that <laughs> no it's a lot of work and if you're not ready for it yeah. it's not not gonna work out for you and that's just the sad truth but it's going mm. great for me, so i'm very thankful <laughs> you were so inspiring two seconds ago what <laughs> <laughs> and then i was like no we need to cut that you're like, down probably not gonna work you're like wait i'm, giving, I'm hyping it up too much um <laughs> It's kind of unrelated. What do you think is the right age for someone to start dating in her life? Uh, you... I hated this question. Hate... Because... I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm curious because like everyone seems no. to like. Do you not remember me freshman year when people were like, oh, you and Seb should start dating? And I was like, no, 
no, not going to happen. I was like, I am not dating anyone until I am in college. That was my mindset because yeah. military kid mindset. And I was like, I don't want to go into a long distance relationship. Exactly. No. I don't want to one and then move within like a year. Cause I was only in Oki for two years. I was like, one, that's not long enough to know someone, start dating them and trust them long enough to be in a long distance relationship. So Jeez. I thought, <laughs> so my, my idea of when you should start dating was completely different than when it actually happened. Mm -hmm. So I would say for your personal self, just make a goal. And if it, if it doesn't work out, then it doesn't. My ideal age was to do it after college when I could commit to that person 100%. Mm -hmm. And I had myself figured out, but did it work out that way? Absolutely not. I started dating my sophomore year of high school and it's been going ever since. So you can take that as you would like. I, yeah, I mean, it turned out well, like you don't have to be, there's nothing to be worried about. Obviously high school relationships are much different than, I don't want to say real ones. They can be real. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm moving on. I can't do this anymore. It's, but they also set you up to make some mistakes that you don't want to make. So mm -hmm. be careful with like, yourself. Up. It's kind of <laughs> practice. Like it's a good warm up. or not that your relationships aren't important. I, it I'm helps you it. understand in a relationship and what you don't want yeah let's talk about college then <laughs> um you're just talking Moving about on. how much you've grown please yes so that's over with <laughs> uh how, how did your freshman year wrap up how did things finish for you um for me it was pretty good there was okay dead, yeah. so the roommates i started with were not the roommates that i ended with and that wasn't okay. because of drama it's just how it worked out so i ended up having a new roommate I absolutely adore her we are like we're so in sync with each other awesome. it's amazing like it was it was awesome um grade wise doing pretty good um college was surprisingly easier than high school and I don't oh, know why I don't, don't want to hear it <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if <laughs> Sebastian says it's cool I go to a Christian campus so I don't know if that's it but I don't know. Grades were doing pretty good. Um, it was weird being on my own for the first time, like completely alone. Like I didn't, yeah. it's not like I go back home parents influence again. Like I've, mm -hmm. I've been on my own day one. And so I think I've grown up so much. Like I used to be scared of taking charge of my life and now I just do it. And I'm like, okay, I'm making this decision. It is what wow. it is. <laughs> yeah. So I you're pretty good. Is there anything else specifically do you think has changed about you over the past year? Um, well, I mean, if we're going back into the relationship part, it's my first oh. year. Doing long, it's my first year doing long distance <laughs> in college with Sebastian. And yeah. it was very challenging. And I think we're going into sophomore year with a completely different mindset than we were going into freshman year. It was a lot harder than we thought it was, but we okay. made it. We're good. Um, I've learned that I can travel by myself and pay for my own tickets up to Virginia, which I didn't know. I, because awesome. I got a job, I didn't realize how cheap it was going up to Virginia. So I actually went up there twice this year, which was really cool. Um, just trying to think, oh, I've learned that having a job is really important. So I'm mm -hmm. actually trying to get another job on top of the one that I have when I go back. Yeah. So I would say I'm just, I'm adulting right now. I don't know if I'm doing it That's well. That's the word. Doing... That's the word. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I, we just need to get Sebastian on the pod. This is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, so if, for those who don't remember, you're an English major, which I mean, inspired from, I think Mr. Koya believe in a mix of other things, oh, I'm yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. uh, how do you think, have you been writing a lot? How's your writing changed? Do you think you're getting better? You said it was easy. So. Yeah. So I'm getting better at being able to sit down and just start writing and write like yeah. a ton I'm good at that but my teachers don't really like sit down and look at the work at as much as Mr. Koya did like he would sit there oh, and wow. destroy it. my teachers mm -hmm. just kind of look at it and go oh like you're on the right path this is good you can go to tutoring and get someone else to look at it and then I'll turn it in and they'll say oh you missed a few commas here the ideas here don't really match. I'm like, well, why didn't you just say that the first time you read it? Like, mm -hmm. you could have given me that chance to fix it. But my writing's going pretty well. I would say my biggest flex writing-wise is 
my bikes. friends yeah my my friends will look at a paper that they have to do for english and go oh my gosh this is like an 1800 word paper and i'm like dude that's easy you could bust that out like right now and they're like wow. Are you crazy <laughs> And I'm like, my paper that I'm doing right now is 3,000 words. And I just did it like yeah. easy peasy, easy. <laughs> so wow, that's crazy. That I'm, yeah. When Once you're in the English major mindset, words just mean nothing to you. You just, you just get, turn them out. Yep. Words on words on words. That's a, that's a lot of words, Kenna. That's, that's impressive. What kind of, what, what are you like writing about the most? I'm sure you're not writing about like super interesting things, but I don't know. Moving forward, is there anything that appeals to you? Um, well, I've never done any creative writing yet. That's what I'm, I it's think the best I'm part. What are you? I don't know how you're doing. I couldn't imagine. That. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't started any creative writing. Mine has been all kind of research heavy papers, yeah. which is large because you have to have so many sources. Um, mm. The last paper I wrote was a research paper and it was on standardized tests and you couldn't have any bias. Of course, my yeah. bias side was that we should either get rid of them or change them because they're not helping anyone but mm -hmm. after doing the research I learned that they're probably more beneficial than we think they are for a lot of different reasons um I'm trying to think of the papers I did before that I think I did a paper on pathos ethos and logos oh the best like a, holy, holy each trinity one. yeah the, the holy trinity um I can't think of the papers I wrote while being class this is so you don't weird. remember your three thousand word papers this is how oh, like you're just a writing robot <laughs> no that was my research paper on standardized oh, tests. gotcha and then i think the beginning of the year we just wrote about ourselves so we did yeah. like personal stories so i guess i did do some creative writing but that was just as warm-ups i guess wait that's not even fair you're, you're obviously gonna be the coolest one there like that's if i was in your class i'd be so annoyed i'm like yeah i went to i went to visit my grandparents on spring break and you're like yeah i, I lived in new zealand i lived in spain well, that was that's how i felt during my speech class i i had to take fundamentals of speech and the first speech we did was introducing ourselves like where are you from what are some things you like to do what are some that's sports for you I was like, you're just asking for it. Like, you know, as a military kid, when people yeah. ask you, oh, from, and you're like, here we go. Like, I got to get into it. Like, as much as you love telling people, you kind of like hate because you're like, ah, don't take this the wrong way. But like, this is just how it happened. <laughs> yeah. And there's no good way to deliver it. I think I, I talk about this like everyone. There's like, there's yeah. no good way. Because if you make it seem too casual, you seem like, like a, I don't know, like a jerk. I, like you don't want to make it seem like it's not cool because you know it's cool, but you also don't want to make it too big of a deal because then people yeah. are like, oh, so you think it's cool or not? Uh, it's probably not that complicated. That's probably me overthinking it, but there's, there's levels <laughs> no, I, to it for sure. Whenever I say it, I always like, I'm totally blessed, but I'm not trying to like rub it in anyone's face. Like that, yeah. that's down to it is what it is but i'm very thankful that it happened yeah that's not fair once again uh, is, there, <laughs> is there anything else you've become involved in i'm not sure if you have is there any like clubs or any other opportunities like sp um, sports underwater hockey do they have that in florida they don't have that in florida that i did is outrageous i know well okay they actually do they have a club at the i think it's the ymca down in tampa but they're mm -hmm. not currently because of covid so i may start doing underwater hockey in tampa i you also get learned... covid underwater my so my dad's a doctor and he's like well if they if they bleach the pool properly it should kill the bacteria in the pool so you mm -hmm. should be but the thing is indoor pools when you're above the water and you're breathing the same air that's when it becomes an issue sure 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 um not the point of that conversation not the point. go ahead <laughs> also have a national dragon boat team that practices in orlando oh. and i did dragon boat in high school and i want to get into it but i don't have a car nor a license so i don't know how to get to orlando and tampa where i'm currently at so that's just something oh. that's gonna have out yeah, I mean that's at least you know like it's around like you you, you had yeah. to look for it but you know it exists there at least underwater exactly. underwater hockey like oh you just need a pool right I mean you need the little you need the gear I guess I don't know what I'm talking about <laughs> it sounds really cool though like I, <laughs> it's the coolest thing ever underwater hockey uh, do you know what what's next year looking like for you housing classes what are you looking forward to um, I'm looking forward to my housing I think yeah. I don't know I went 
from living in a five man apartment with just two people. Like it was just me and my other roommate. So I I had my own bedroom. She had her own bedroom. It was really nice. We're now moving into an eight man with six people and all my roommates are seniors, except for the one that I had last year. And so it's going to be me and my roommate who are sophomores and Mm -hmm. a whole bunch of seniors. Which is funny because I have my driver's permit. And so my roommates are all 21 and over. And so technically I can drive with them. And I'm like, <laughs> practicing. <laughs> I don't know if they're going to let me drive their cars, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Get it done. Um, for classes, oh, no, I hate my schedule. I made it, but I hate it. I have an 8 a.m., a 9 a.m., a 10, an 11, a 12, and then a 3 to 4 Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I don't know why I did that to myself, but why, I did. Why are you taking so many? What's going on? Um, well, some of them are... So I have a science and a lab, and that's mm-hmm. I, 10 to 11. So I don't have the lab every single day, but when I do have it, it's during that time period. And then for 12 o'clock, I'm actually a TA for Spanish. So I help out with the Spanish classes. And then my longest class is like three to five or something. It's my film class. So it has yeah. to be that. And then the other ones are just short, easy classes. But they're all Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It's a lot. Yeah, that's not, yeah. not the best. Yeah, because I also uh, I have a schedule I have to stay with. So I had to make my classes work around my work schedule. So it's not fun. Not like It's busy. Forward. You're, you're adulting, yeah. though, like you said. Like, this is what we yeah. signed up for. Yeah, Getting adulting. It done. doing it well, but I'm doing it. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, my class at 8 a.m is advanced grammar so woo. advanced grammar how advanced does grammar get i, didn't know I don't know advanced grammar but i have to say grammar is not my strong suit i'm i'm not good at grammar so i'm grammar excited. is grammar though i'm a little confused i'm curious you have to fill me in because i don't know how much. i i the worst thing that always gets me in my essays is my commas Same. i yeah. i used to go so comma heavy like i would just put commas mm-hmm. wherever it seemed suited and Mr. Koya knocked it out of me that you don't need commas in every freaking sentence. So yeah. I stopped commas. And now whenever I think about putting a comma, I go, no, you shouldn't put one there. And so I just leave it. And then the teacher will go back and be like, you should have put a comma there. I'm like, dang it. Look at that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Seriously curious. I want to know the unwritten rules of English. I'm kind of <laughs> ironic. Yes, it's just all about English. It'd be so exciting. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how you do it, kind of. That's crazy. Uh, going forward, are you considering studying abroad? I know, like your family already lives in New Zealand. Is this a little too much, like traveling for you? I know you like traveling. What are you thinking? I do like traveling. I actually have plans to study abroad in Ecuador for the spring semester. Of course. <laughs> the spring? Uh, this Next coming spring. This coming spring? So it, oh. Yeah, it'll be the end of our sophomore year. How cool is that? That's awesome. So cool. I'm looking forward to it. It's helping with my, I actually have a, I, last time we talked, I was a single major. I am currently a double major now. I'm double majoring in English and then TESOL. So like the teaching English as a second language. Oh. And we had those at our, Mm -hmm. it wasn't too obvious, but we had it. Um, So I going to work on my TESOL and my Spanish at the same time, which is pretty exciting. So whenever you teach English as a second language, isn't it important to know a lot of languages or is it, are you just going to be like a Spanish specialist? Well, it's, it's kind of like, well, you can teach anyone. So it can be someone coming from China, someone coming from Thailand, from Germany. It's just people that need to know or want to know how to speak English as their second language. For that degree, it's a little different. It's not an English degree because you have to learn how to teach English to a non-English speaker. That Whereas, sounds impossible. Yeah. Even because, if you don't know their language. <laughs> yeah, because if you think about it, like a Spanish teacher, if they're in a classroom, they're speaking Spanish to you. They're teaching Spanish. Yes. Most of our English or Spanish teachers are English speaking yeah. with Spanish. But for TESOL, it's very heavy on you don't have to know both the languages. You just need to be able to speak English and teach the students. Which you may have a translator, like some schools may have a translator yeah. in the class. You, I'm not sure how that works. I think I've seen translators with teachers, but I know a lot of countries ask for like Americans or people who speak mm-hmm. English to come and teach English to their their kids in their school. So that is what I am studying. 
That sounds difficult. That's not, I good for you for taking that up. I can't. You, you asked me if I was sick of traveling, and I literally added another major to my major. <laughs> so I could go travel more. <laughs> of course you did. Of course, I should have known. Why did I even ask that? I should have just asked you before, and then we could have just talked about it. Did you get to why why Ecuador? Um. So my school has a program. Obviously, they have like a study abroad program. Yeah. Um, where they've linked up with other countries and mm-hmm. the. I think the Spanish speaking countries were, I think there was only Ecuador or you could go to Spain, but Spain was not on the list with the company. And so the way that works is you would kind of just like cancel your time at your school. So I would take a pause from my school, go over and start in a new school. And then when I come back, my school would welcome me back with all my scholarships and everything. But if I went with the program, so which is going to Ecuador, my scholarship I have for school is paying for my entire time in Ecuador and then some. Wow. And like, Perfect. pay extra to Spain or get paid to go to Ecuador. And I was like, well, I've never been to Ecuador, so I might as well go down there. Let's and do it. Seems, so, like, we're going, we're going to the Galapagos Islands. We're going into the jungle. Um, we're going into the city. Like, it's just going to be so cool. I'm so excited. I, yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm going to have to talk again after that. I, Jeez. <laughs> A lot of traveling. Uh, ne- next segment, I started doing this recently. It's uh, it's the preposterous predicament question of the show that I have for you. <laughs> Would you rather have to talk with an obviously fake New Zealand slash Australian accent for the rest of your life, or you can never go to either of those countries again? Oh, totally speak with the no, no. yes you know I, how... would rather... <laughs> I would rather sound stupid and get to go to those countries <laughs> than not get to go to those countries at all because i don't know if you notice but whenever americans go to another country they already sound stupid to people like you open your mouth and they're like oh that's an american, american. I might as well act like i'm trying than not trying at all I thought that that's even nice. worse because wouldn't that be insulting? Especially, I said, obviously fake. So, like, it's not even good. It's, like, the worst. Imagine the worst New Zealand accent you can think of, but it's still being distinctively someone trying to do a New Zealand accent. That's what you're going to be talking like. And you're going to be doing this in America, too. So people are going to be talking to you, and they're going to know it's fake. Because um, they're like, aren't you American? <laughs> they would have thought you would live there your entire life. Or not, because they know it's fake. I don't know. That sounds like a ton of awkward situations you have to deal with. Forever. Well, since, since no one in America knows where New Zealand's at, they probably would be like, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's because New Zealand doesn't exist. That's why we don't know where it is. I just- most importantly. <laughs> Sorry, I decided, I decided to say over time. And for those people who don't know and are still listening, that was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> I'm just going gonna, gonna to clip it by itself, but it was a joke. I, I know New Zealand exists. Um, I know that their engineers are capable of making toilets, I'm sure, and they're not responsible for the seasons. Um, that wraps up the preposterous predicament. Thank you, Kenna. Now, You're I welcome. said for, for the people who have stuck around this long, I did say I wasn't going to read any comments, but I kind of want to. I did print them out in case I changed my mind. Um, one person said, this girl's a natural. She should start her own vlog. She has such a positive, happy personality. That's from John Willie. And what an awesome name is John Willie. I was just about is- to say <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Thank you, John Willie. Like I, I'm proud that a guy named John Willie watches watches the show. And he's absolutely from New Zealand. That is awesome. Uh the best ever comparison I've heard about New Zealand schools is Hogwarts it's from Music Mad sixty seven. So I think I think you said that. Yeah, it's meant to be a compliment. I don't know why something It is. He put it. laughing emoji, laughing emoji, laughing emoji. I think yeah. you're good. I think you're good. We're on we're on the good Some side people here. Really came at me and I was like, guys, guys, we need to relax. <laughs> Yeah, let's see. It was, um, who was it? John, Carl Mann was the one who I'm not a fan of. Mann with two N's, by the way. It, it, as a, mm. a not, not a fan. He said, Visualize. this was hard to watch. Why are you watching that? If it was so painful, I can't help it. I can't help well, it. Well, it was feeling. literally easy enough if you stuck around and watched it. And commenting? And commented, and exactly. Commented. So he watched enough to know what to comment about, to know the content of what we were saying, but then to also comment. Unbelievable. We were good enough to entice him. Yeah, what can we say? 
Like I said, we're, <laughs> it's quality content for you guys. We're trying our best here. And it, also, most importantly, like you live there. It's not like we're just making assumptions. Like this yeah. was your observations. Obviously, not everyone's observations. Yeah, exactly. Are perfectly it correct. Was the view of only two years living in the country. Like, of course, I'm not going right. to know everything. But I'm also giving my perspective living mm-hmm. in four countries how it felt and how to yeah. make visualize and understand how I felt. So it's You're a little it. bit dramatized, yeah. but it. And you do it for other American kids too. Like it's not for the, I mean, also the worst part is my, my YouTube stats. Whenever I go on my YouTube stats page now, it is all New Zealand stuff. Like it is just like 99% of your viewers are from New Zealand because they got like, uh, like five, 5,000, I think it's up to. So it thinks that I'm a New Zealand podcast. So like whenever, like it's like other channels, your viewers watch, it's like Kiwi Americans, like New Zealand, this New Zealand, that and it's just really painful to have to like not know who my audience is because it's all just been skewed by this one video with kind of, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I appreciate the support, of course. And it like tells me what time they're awake. And of course, it's like two in the morning is when your viewers are most active. And clearly we couldn't figure that out today. <laughs> yeah, we were. Time zones are garbage. Think, think about that. What if time zones, like what if we just didn't have, everyone should be on the same time. And if at 2 a.m. it's light outside, then go outside. Like I that's know. just your version. That's of just your a. world. Yeah. I think so. Wait, not your no no. Two a.m. is two a.m. Wait, you're messing me up. Everyone has the same two a.m. But you're either you can sleep or you can be awake. It's it's your decision. It's your decision based on your environment. I think that's what we should do. I don't I don't I don't know if everyone would be on board with that. And whose two a.m. do we keep? America. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, I'm, but which part? I'm biased. Of, which that's part good. of America? Because Y'all have two so, different two a.m. Mm, not Central Time. Central Time's stupid. I'm uh, not a fan of Central Time. Um, either West Coast or East Coast. Maybe Hawaii. Hawaii time zone, just because. Oh my gosh. I, can. Was, I was sitting here in my head like, what about Hawaii? Because they're like one of there the first or the last people. I think they're the last. They're the last sliver of like area to catch up with everyone else. Yeah. So we'd uh, be gaining. If we all switched to Hawaii, New Zealand would be gaining like a whole day. Boom. Wow, time isn't real, anyways. Like we we made that <laughs> we made that up. It doesn't even matter. What?